in uh, the expanded access program, we're trying to understand if convalescent plasma, plasma taken from recovered COVID-19 patients that is antibody rich, we're trying to understand if that plasma when given to patients with active COVID-19 disease improves their outcomes. But before we can evaluate what it does to outcomes, we first needed to establish whether people had access to the product and whether the product was safe. My name is Michael Joyner, and I'm a physiologist and anesthesiologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm here today to talk about our Mayo Clinic proceedings paper, Safety Update, COVID-19 Convalescent Plasma in 20,000 Hospitalized Patients. This uh, paper reports on results from the National Expanded Access Program for Convalescent Plasma, which is sponsored by the United States Food and Drug Administration and BARDA in conjunction with Mayo. Convalescent plasma is a passive immunity therapy. That plasma is harvested by colleagues at, at blood banks across the country and then used to treat patients with active COVID-19 infections in the hospital. Anytime you give a blood product, especially plasma, you're concerned about two major problems, transfusion-related uh, acute lung injury or trolley and transfusion-associated cardiac overload. Uh, we were especially concerned about these problems because the patients in our study are so sick. Many are in the ICU, many are receiving mechanical ventilation, and those who are not in the ICU or receiving mechanical ventilation are getting high-dose supplemental oxygen out on the hospital floor. Many of the patients were older, many of the patients had coexisting uh, metabolic or cardiovascular disease, so we were very, very concerned that we might be doing harm by administering plasma uh, to these patients. Fortunately, we found out that our rates of uh, trolley and taco were extremely low. Uh, they were even lower when you consider how sick the patients were. And most importantly, when you look at these sorts of adverse events or, or problems, you have to do an attribution scale, which is not related, possibly related, probably related, definitely related. And even in the cases that we thought might be related, the majority were possibly or probably. So we were very pleased uh, to find out that convalescent plasma was a safe treatment. Currently, we're working with our statistical colleagues at Mayo Clinic Florida, uh, Dr. Ricky Carter and others, uh, to try to understand uh, the, the, the potential efficacy of convalescent plasma in treating patients with COVID-19. Does it reduce mortality? Does it uh, help sicker patients, less sick patients? Is it better given early, late, and so forth? So we're very, very uh, pleased about the outcomes of this study. We think it's a step forward. And really, we've met now two of our main goals associated with the expanded access program for convalescent plasma. We've shown that there's broad-based access for this therapy across the country, and we've shown that it's safe. We're now uh, finishing up an exploratory analysis on efficacy. And, and with that analysis, we also hope to provide uh, treating physicians with insights about the best use case for this product. If it works, do you give it early? How much do you give? Uh, what do we know about the antibody levels in the plasma? So that's what we're working on now, but all of that builds upon the safety data that's published in Mayo Clinic Proceeds. It's been a great privilege to work with my colleagues on this project as we attempt to help the country and really help the world uh, come up with new ways to address COVID-19. We're very uh, pleased that we've shown uh, there's broad-based access to this product and that it's safe. Uh, we're currently uh, working feverishly to understand any signals related to efficacy and report those uh, in the scientific literature and to the general public as soon as possible. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content 
is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.